Hello! In this episode of Finno Greek Machining, there will be not a lot of machining. Uh, instead, we have uh, some animations. Uh, uh, I try to um, explain how this rotary vane compressor works. Uh, well, uh, there is an oiling system which is uh, actually serving for lubrication and it also pushes the veins uh, against uh, the uh, cylinder walls. Uh, well, uh, there is an ani I made an animation about this thing. Uh, another thing is uh, the oil nibbles, uh, which we are going to machine this time. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> that, uh, but that's a li very little bit of uh, machine. Uh, anyway, uh, let's start uh, with the <clears throat> with the rotary vein compression uh, or hydraulic system. This is the rotor of this compressor. There are slots to accommodate the veins. At this end there is also a bronze bearing and a cap. There is the cylinder and at the other end there is the oil pump and another bronze bearing. This is the hole where the journey of the oil inside the pump starts. The compressed air and oil come out from these three holes. There must be an oil separator for oil circulation. These three holes are the air intake. The oil is pressurized uh, by the compressed air and also by this oil pump. The pressurized oil enters the undersides of the veins through this hole. There is also a groove at each end of the rotor to further help in oil migration. There are six veins having a quite accurate thickness and length. The rotor is asymmetrically aligned with the cylinder. The veins divide the space between the rotor and the cylinder in six compartments. The volume of a compartment depends on its rotational position, thus allowing to compress the air it contains. The veins are pushed against the cylinder wall by two actions. First there is the centrifugal force, which is not great in this case. Then there is the oil pressure under each vein. The hydraulic force on each vein is greater at the low pressure side, thus forcing the vein out. When the vein rotates to the high pressure side, the oil viscosity keeps it against the, the cylinder wall. The oil pump is there to start the oil flowing. It is not needed after some oil air pressure is gained. <sighs> The bottoms of the slots are interconnected by holes through the rotor. These holes are there to allow the oil to migrate under the veins as they change position. <sighs> well, in order to mm, test this oil pump and in order to use it later on uh, we need to have oil input. Uh, this is the uh, gear pump side and this is the outside of the thing. There is, uh, if you look into there, you probably can see that there is an M6 thread. 
And then I have here copper tube. It's a three millimeter outer diameter. And there is a hole inside there. If you look, you can see how it goes into there. So maybe you can see it. It's, it's there in that hole. So, uh, well, uh, we need to have this in this hole so that it's uh, oil tight, so that it's, it's tight. Now it's not tight, uh, and so that it stays there. Well, we can use this. That's an O-ring. <laughs> and, oh, oh, O-ring. <laughs> oh, where did it go? Oh, there. It's so tiny. Mm, so I can have it here, like that. And now, if there would be a method, uh, this would go there uh, quite easily, actually. And uh, then when uh, the 3.3 millimeter uh, hole starts, this won't go any further. Okay. Then we should have something that squeezes it uh, uh, in between uh, there. So what I thought uh, is that I make using this uh, M6 bolt, uh, I will uh, drill a hole through it. And then when you screw it in like that into there, it will actually actually squeeze this oil ring, this ring, o-ring, and uh, it will uh, tighten it uh, there in between and it should actually uh, tie, make it uh, tight. Yeah, okay. So now, uh, well, I could actually <laughs> make this uh, from scratch, from some uh, 12 millimeter uh, round uh, stock, but uh, well, uh, you get the same result by just using uh, an uh, M6 bolt. But uh, of course, as you can see, now it's bottomed there. Uh, it needs to be a little bit shorter, maybe 10 millimeters. So I first make it a little bit shorter and then I drill a hole through it. And uh, what else should I do for it for this? Um, of course, paste this. I don't want to have those markings there. And uh, then uh, make this end uh, so that it, uh, well, I think uh, that the best the geometry is just plain flat. So, yeah. Okay. So, let's go uh, do this. Uh, well, it's a late, late job. And then I can test whether it uh, does what I suppose, what I think it does. So, let's do that.
So now, uh, well, uh, <laughs> this uh, is the part I made in the lathe. Uh, it used to be a bolt, <laughs> and now it's no more. Uh, well, it's uh, still uh, somewhat bolt, but there is a hole through. Um, you might see it. Uh, it's a really true hole, like that. And uh, well, uh, uh, then uh, this is uh, the three millimeter copper tube. It was actually originally uh, well uh, over three millimeters, and since this hole is three millimeters, it uh, didn't fit. So I put it into lathe and uh, uh, did something to it. <laughs> Uh, mainly a little bit of file and uh, emery paper and there you are. And now it fits there perfectly so far. <laughs> well, it doesn't need to go uh, farther than that. Okay. So now at that point we need something. Uh, when, when I screw it in, it should squeeze it and uh, then it, uh, uh, well, uh, does uh, tightening there. What I'm going to use is this. Uh, this stuff is uh, nitrile rubber, and uh, well, I just cut a small piece out of it, and then I put it here, like that. Yeah. And then, when I screw it in, it uh, barely goes into there. And that's really good that it's uh, tight against the... Uh, against uh, uh, it really doesn't want to go at first but now it goes yeah well it started to resist and then uh, just tightening this one and it uh, doesn't need to be really tight uh, I'm pretty sure there you are. Well, hmm, looks uh, a little bit <laughs> out of place, but okay. Uh, I'm really sure that this is this is tight now. It's tight. Uh, this is not the final tube, so uh, we are going to test this. So. The next thing is to make something else. Uh, we are making a, a key <laughs> slot in, in, in the gear, one of the gears. We need a key slot there. And then we need to make the key and also a makeshift uh, shaft, uh, which I can use to test this pump.
Okay. So, uh, let's put this uh, thing together. Uh, wait a minute, I need uh, one. Allen wrench like this. Okay, let's see now. Uh, first of all, I shortened uh, this. Uh, it was very long. Uh, just to be able to test this. And now the orientation here. Uh, well, uh, that's the output hole. It goes to that hole. That, <laughs> that hole there. So that should be input hole and this one should be aligned with the input hole. So it's not this way, but it is that way. So one uh, place from that. So I can put first a screw there because, uh, well, okay, there you go. Like that. And now we have, this is, uh, oh, which way? This way. So, and then we have this gear with a key. <laughs> Well, it's round. Uh, well, it can be round. I don't understand why why it should be like a, a square. And then we have the key. <laughs> it's uh, like that. It's um, well, uh, uh, well, just a suitable piece from uh, uh, four uh, millimeter shaft I had in my there. And now I put this here, like that, push it through, and then I align the key, like that. And obviously, oh wow, <laughs> oh. obviously this is a little bit too long, but hopefully I don't drop the key. <laughs> there you are, key is there. And as you can see, this is a little bit too long. And now I just turn this over that. And now I should be really careful not to pull this out. It comes out from there, if I just pull it. And now I have rest of the screws here. Start from the opposite side. There should be place here. And then this, maybe, that, maybe, we have uh, six all together. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, my in intention was to either not to use a, a ceiling, uh, a casket at all, or uh, something uh, um, like, uh, I don't know what the uh, English name is, Perbatex maybe? I don't know. So yeah, and now let's roll this in. Sorry, my hands are on the way. These go really easily in there. So the alignment of these uh, holes is, uh, uh, well, mildly said precise. And there is not a lot of movement. Uh -huh, this is, uh, it was just not started well. I think one of these uh, is a little bit tight, maybe. No. Not at all. Okay, and now I tighten them. Not a lot uh, this time. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't make, it, make it any tighter if you tighten, tighten things like crazy. I could, but I don't want to. Okay. Okay, first is there, and now this should be, yeah, well, there is a tight spot, but I know these tight spots will uh, go away 
when you rotate it a little bit. Yeah, already gone. Some burr or something. And this is really tight. Okay, now next step uh, we go to the. I have a oil test system there. Okay, let's see if I can now rotate this. I, I think I should use my hand drill and rotate it a little bit so that it becomes a little bit closer. I will do that before we start. Okay, now let's do some uh, testing here. This jar contains some oil. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, here I have uh, uh, this pump connected uh, to my uh, hand drill and I'm blocking uh, the hole here in the backside with my finger. Okay, and uh, well, let's see now. Nothing happens. Something happens. It starts to pump oil. And if I lift it, it doesn't start. So now it's basically sucking air. And yeah, this works. Exactly as intended. It sucks some air, uh, probably between uh, these, uh, <laughs> uh, because there is no casket at the moment. But uh, it's am amazingly good. Okay, it works. Yeehoo. <laughs> and comment if you like of course yeah. so uh, proof of concept succeeded well uh, this means that the oil pump uh, portion of uh, this uh, device is ready uh, in the next episode uh, it will be the cylinder and uh, there are some challenges in that one. First of all there will be a lot of material removal. <coughs> I didn't have a suitable stock for that one so yeah. And then uh, some alignment issues uh, because it has two ends and uh, the holes must be uh, quite precisely aligned uh, at the opposite ends. But that will be in the next episode of Finno Brick Machining. Well, <laughs> as always, till then, bye! Yeah.